Today we're going to use matrices to organize data. Now matrices, that's the plural form of the word matrix. There will be no movie discussion, however. There's no discussion of that trilogy. There's nothing to do with this. However, I will make some, actually there will be some discussion. I'll talk to you why it was called the matrix in a little bit, tell you why. But if you look at this, this is just a basic example of a, a uh, table. But we can also take data like that and label it and put it into Microsoft Excel, right? Who's worked with Microsoft Excel? Okay, it's a spreadsheet, right? A lot of uh, great electronic grade books for teachers are just Excel spreadsheets. I know I used to use Excel. I just wrote my own spreadsheet and just calculated it. Right now we use a program. All the Trumbull County teachers do and all it is is just an elaborate spreadsheet. But if we take all the labels and get rid of them, so I get rid of this easy cam with my white out and then this So I get rid of all that. What I'm left with is what? Just some numbers, right? I'm just left with a rectangular array of numbers. That's what happens if I remove the labels. You have a rectangular array of numbers and rows and columns. If I were to take those numbers out of the table or spreadsheet and place brackets around them, I will have created a matrix. What's the matter? Oh. Hmm? You have no idea what's the matter, or you just have no idea if you're just in general? What you feel is necessary. See how that word matrix is in red and bold? I'd probably write stuff around that now. Definitely. I had a college professor once tell me that, you know, you're not in high school anymore. I'm not going to tell you what to put notes. But it's what a good rule is if he said, I, if I feel it's important enough for me to take my time and effort to write down, then you should write it down. So stuff I write for sure. All right, a matrix is a rectangular arrangement of numbers in rows and columns as is enclosed by brackets. Each number, you're going to be asked a question about this tonight, each number in a matrix is called an element. One of your questions tonight on your homework asks you to list all the elements in the matrix. So elements are what? Yeah, they're numbers, right? That's what an element is. So when it asks you to list the elements, they're just asking you to list the numbers. There you go, yeah. A matrix looks like this. This numbers in rows and columns enclosed by brackets. The first thing you will have to do tonight is give me the size of a matrix. The size of a matrix is determined by counting first the number of rows, so down, uh, backwards, other way, and then the number of columns, this way. So you count the number of rows first, number of columns second. This matrix is a two by three, since it has one, two rows, and one, two, three columns. That is a two by three matrix. So the first thing you will have to do tonight is count. So that's easy, right? Unless you went to Brookfield. Anybody from Brookfield? Good. We can rip on them all they want. No, we want to. Yes. So, right? Remember, watch this. Session. You, I'm sure you've been doing it for years. You've been watching Sesame Street. Count Vaughn. Count. One, two, three, ah, 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 you know, that guy. He was. <laughs> I still watch it when my son watches. 
What? Where? Oh, there's three R's there. No, but I'll give you an attaboy. An attaboy. Yeah, actually, what, what probably happened is the human mind, if you, if you experience something that's a misspelling, visually, your mind, your eyes will actually, the brain will remove the extra letter. That's not good enough? No, wait, can I get started? Sure. Okay. No, thank you. Did you? <laughs> or it's like Tony the Tiger. They're great the arrangement. So, all right. I know I missed my true calling in life. I should have done voiceovers for cartoons and stuff. Oh, does he? Give the dimensions of matrix A. So what, what are the dimensions of that matrix? Three by four, because it's got one, two, three rows, one, two, three, four columns. So that is a three by four matrix. You don't you have to relax. That one? <laughs> Am I just messing up your notes? Is that what it's happening? How about please? What's the size of that matrix? Backwards. Three by one, because it's one, two, three by one. Mark that one down. That could be a good trick question given to you. Oh, good question. What kind of numbers can I have in a matrix? In this class, and we'll talk about this more next week when we get into chapter two, but in this class, we can have negative numbers. We're working with a set of real numbers. All right, so we can have positives or negatives and zero. Good question. Thank you, Josh. Sure. It's my job. All right, a matrix with the same number of rows and columns is called a square matrix. So if it has three rows and three columns, Four rows, four columns. That's a square matrix, correct? Because they're because they're same number of rows and columns. So if you would, that would be a square. However, not just for square ones. You can add or subtract the corresponding elements of two or more. So two or three or four matrices that are the same size. So if I have two or more matrices that are exactly the same size, so and they don't have to be square ones. So two two by threes or two four by fives, I can add or subtract them. So that's basically the only mathematical operations you're going to be doing today, are addition and subtraction. So for this, we're going to use matrices A and B. If I'm going to do any operations, the first thing I have to do, and first of all, we want to find A plus B. First thing I have to check and see, are they the same size? A is three by two, B is one, two, three by two, so yes. Now, what I'm going to do now when I add these two together is I'm going to add the numbers that are in the same place in the matrices. So 14 and 11 are both the top left ones. So I'm going to add those two. So I'm going to do this, 14 plus 11. And then I'll do 7 plus 0, 21 plus 9, 19 plus 18, 35 plus 25, and 12 plus 5. Now, this is the thought process that will go on in your head. You do not have to write this out. This number plus that one. See how they're both the upper left? This one plus this one. They're both the upper right. Middle left. Middle right. OK? So I just, I just, what I did here, this is the thought process that's going on. So I want this in the notes. Well, not, but on the recording. Now what I'm saying is this is what you may do just, okay, I gotta do 14 plus 11 in your head. I do not expect you to write this out every time. If you want to, that's great. If you don't, that's fine. Just be careful. If you make a mistake, I know you all know how to add and subtract. It'll be that you either just make a simple computation error or you'll add or subtract the wrong two numbers you'll get one from another place. Like instead of doing 14 plus 11, you might do uh, 14 plus 0. 
and just picked a number from the wrong place. So anyway, now go ahead and add those together to get 25, 7, 30, 37, 60, and 17. There's the sum of my two matrices. Now look at the size of the sum. What are the dimensions of this matrix? 3 by 2, right? After I add or subtract, should my matrices be the same size or different size? Should be the same. If you start off with two that are 3 by 2, your answer had better be 3 by 2. If it's not, then you made a mistake somewhere. A minus B. So we can add or we can subtract. Hmm? Yeah, the sign will tell you what to do. See how it says A minus B? Okay. Each one of them, each matrix is named with a capital letter, and then it'll, you'll be told whether to add or subtract them. Now, Alex asks, asks that question in a few minutes when we're doing a word problem. How do we know when we add or subtract? Okay. So I'll have 14 minus 11, 21 minus 9, oops, 7 minus 0, 19 minus 18, 35 minus 25, and 12 minus 5. To get 3, 7, 12, 1, 10, and 7. Could I have done B minus A if I were told to do so? Could I do that? B minus A, could I have flip-flopped them? What do you think? Yeah, what kind of numbers would I have gotten, though? Negative. And that's okay. You can get negative numbers. I just want to point that out to you. So go, make sure you have the matrices in the correct order when you're listing, when you're doing the addition or the subtraction. But I also mentioned that we can do th two or more matrices. We can do them with three. C minus D. I'm going to go ahead and take this one and subtract this one. So when I'm done, what size matrix should I have? 2 by 4, right. So I'm going to have 7 minus 5, 16 minus 9, 20 minus 13, and 5 minus 5 on the top. On the bottom, I'll have 31 minus 55, 15 minus 11, 19 minus 4, and 40 minus 19. To give me a final matrix of 2, 7, 7, 0, negative 24, 4, 15, and 21. So f that's it. It really is not harder than that. All you're doing is adding or subtracting. The only thing we can do is just to make it a little more complicated by maybe adding an extra matrix in there. But we can do more than two. Yes, sir? We'll get that. We'll get to there. Okay. You've been waiting for that all period? But I'm just, uh, Mr. Fada, I just want to know. I'm putting up with the math so I can learn where they where got the name for the Matrix movie. Okay. Let me pause my recording. Now we're going to add those three together because I mentioned we can add more than two or add and subtract more than two matrices at a time. So what we'll have is three plus seven plus five, all the ones from the upper left, five plus 16 plus nine, nine plus 20 plus 13, 19 plus five plus five, and then on the bottom, 13 plus 31 plus 55. Oh, any of these? Yes. Yeah. I thought you were saying you have to put it in your notes. Okay. All right. Just add them up now. That's 10. Our final matrix will be 15, 30, 42, 29, 
43, and 61. Now, what, what can we do with this? What application is there for all this stuff? That would be a good question to have. Well, if you own a business, and a business that sells something, like my dad owned a chain of grocery stores, we constantly kept track of our inventory, especially with food. Why? Food goes bad. That's right. It spoils. So especially for our, like our meat and our produce and our dairy section, we had to keep very close track of the way purchasing was done so that you don't buy too much and you end up throwing stuff away because you're losing money then. And that's you're in business to make money and not lose it, right? If you, may, if you lose money, you won't be in business for very long. So this is what an application of, a, of uh, an inventory matrix will do. Most businesses have these now, but depending on the size of the business, if it's a big one, computers track all of it. There's software written for this, but this, all the software does is this on a more advanced level. They'll barcode a lot of their boxes, and um, anytime something is shipped out, it's reduced from the inventory. So this spreadsheet up top shows inventory levels at a shoe store for two colors of three styles of shoes on May 1st. We have deck shoes, sandals, and penny loafers in both brown and black. During May, the manufacturer delivers the following quantities of brown and black shoes in each style. Then during May, here are the purchases of brown and black shoes for each style. So what a, the software programs would do is write an inventory matrix, we'll do that and call it matrix A. They'll write a delivery matrix, which we'll call B, or your receiving matrix, and then a purchase matrix or sales matrix. Now, you're going to have a question just like this on your homework tonight, or very similar to it. It's questions 12 through, 12 through 16, or just like the one I'm going to do. All right. So the first matrix I'm going to write is my inventory. And all I'm going to do is take these numbers and put brackets around them. There we go. So we'll have brown on the left, black on the right, and then the three different styles down. And then we'll do it for each one of these. So 38, 52, 49, 70, 25, 41. There's my inventory matrix. Now I need to write my delivery matrix. It's going to be 25, 32, 30, 35, 18, 12. Now what's different between this and what, the, what you're getting tonight? If you look on page 41, there you go. You'll have two by two matrices. Seniors will go on the top, juniors will go on the bottom, will be the bottom row on, the ma on your matrix. So uh, d it doesn't really matter, but uh, initial membership is A, so at beginning of the year. Then the next one down, join during the year, would be B. And the next one down, stopped attending, would be C. All right? Okay. There's my delivery matrix B, and then my purchase matrix comes from these set of numbers. So I get a matrix of 31, 19, 39, 43, 11, and 17. All right, there are my three matrices. Now let's think about this. We're going to calculate A. plus B, and then we're going to subtract C. What would that represent? Well, these are the shoes you start off with, plus those you get, minus the ones you sell. What is that going to represent at the end? The shoes you started the month with, plus the ones you get in over the month, minus the ones you sell over the month. What will be left? Total what? Shoe's still there, right, inventory at the end of the month. 
which would do you would do what you do the same thing over and over every month you will do it down in the market that's what you do and the businesses have to do this every month they keep an eye on their inventory what you start with plus what you get minus what you sell and that'll be your beginning inventory or ending inventory and what you'll start the, the next month with all over again so whatever I would get after I add those two then subtract C that's what I would start all over with them for the next month so I'm gonna have 38 plus 25 minus 31 52 plus 32 minus 19 49 plus 30 minus 39 70 plus 35 minus 43 25 plus 18 minus 11 41 plus 12 minus 17 that's what um, 63 minus 31 is 32 52.84 minus 19 is 65. 79 minus 39 is 40. 105 minus 43 is 62. That's uh, 43 minus 11 is 32. And 43 minus 17 is 26. All right. You're adding and subtracting today and counting. That's, that's this entire lesson in a nutshell. 1 to 16, skip number 5.